Gary Hinterberg here, co-author of Online Video Marketing Deep Dive. And in today's presentation, we're going to answer a few of the questions from folks who attended our webinar on October 24th. There were hundreds of you who registered and tuned in, and Perry and I both thank you for your interest and your support. Now, if you missed that webinar and you want to take in a replay of it, all you have to do is follow the link on this page to listen and to watch. Now, these questions for today are ones that we believe have the most relevance to our blog followers. There is no particular order for the questions. In some cases, the topics of the questions deserve more than just a quick answer in the time available here. So with that in mind, questions related to SEO, YouTube, and production are going to be addressed in a series of blogs over the next few weeks where we analyze a great free tool called the YouTube Creator Playbook. And we're going to interpret how direct marketers can use this information. More about that in a few minutes. So let's dive into the questions that you asked. Here are two questions that we'll answer together. Number one, does embedding YouTube videos on your website have an impact on total YouTube views? And should you rather encourage people to watch it on a YouTube channel? And question number two as part of this is, when we embed a video into a landing page using YouTube, do we make the video public and add several tags to outsiders if they have access and if they want to search to find the video on YouTube? We recommend that you embed your videos on YouTube on your website for a lot of good reasons and that you do make them public. Among those reasons are the analytics. Another is the SEO value and adding keywords and tags that will help you. YouTube will tell you where traffic to your video came from, that is, from YouTube video embedded in your website, referrals from another website, or organically on YouTube. We're going to get more into this topic more deeply in our next blog post when we cover what's in the YouTube Creator Playbook. Question number three, how regularly would you suggest posting new videos? Once a week, twice a week, something else? Well, most important is to be consistent. If you have changing content, perhaps it's once a week or every couple of weeks. Set a day or publishing schedule and most importantly, be consistent and promote the fact that you post new video at that frequency. We'll cover this more in a future blog post as we talk about that YouTube playbook. Question number four, if sending an email containing video, does it warrant mentioning the video within the subject line? Well, first, emails shouldn't literally have a video embedded in it. While it can be done, not every email client or service can handle it. But if you have a thumbnail in your email that when clicked goes to a landing page where your video resides, then I'd test using the word video in the subject line to see if it lifts your open rate. Number five, in regular direct marketing, humor is discouraged. Does that hold true for video, assuming good taste and wittiness? <laughs> well, humor is still filled with potholes. There is a risk you'll offend or you'll fall flat rather than bringing out a laugh. Now, you have more leeway with video to use humor, but it still seems to be a risky path when you have other less risky options. But if you can turn a phrase and make it humorous or Wink your eye at the right moment or be lighthearted. If it enhances the video presentation, use it. If it seems a risk, then probably not. Number six, what if the person on the video isn't a very good speaker? Well, that can be a challenge. There are many CEOs of organizations that have done a great job of being their own spokesperson, but not everyone can pull it off. I find myself from time to time coaching a client when I'm recording them, and as that coach, I like to try and help put them at ease and bring out enthusiasm before I ever turn on the, the button to start the video. But mostly, we want authenticity. But if the person you are recording isn't cutting it after some period, then you need to find somebody else, which of course raises another issue, and that's if the person you're recording is your client, and if they didn't do so well, you need to explain to them that you may have to find someone else to record. Number seven, we are a B2B service provider. We have videos on nearly all of our pages on our website. Do you think they should autoplay or let the visitor decide to watch? Well, first, congratulations on having videos on most pages of your website. As for autoplay, that's a dicey situation in our judgment. On my own website, I have several videos, but none of them autoplay because it just doesn't feel right. So we suggest that on your interior pages of your website that you let the visitor be in control. Now, on your home page, if seeing the video there can really engage immediately, consider making just that one autoplay. But let your years of experience, along with a candid self-evaluation of your video, help you decide. Number eight, 
Should we use a talking head or more of a slideshow with narration? Well, given that I'm a bit of a talking head on this blog and you're seeing text or images to one side of me from time to time, we really encourage you to use a person on camera. A human being looking into the camera and connecting with another human being is far more effective in making a human connection and building trust with a real person. In fact, with our own videos that we've produced, we find much greater audience retention when I'm on the screen from start to finish. So really the question to ask yourself is this, would you rather watch a person or scrolling words on a screen? Number nine, with lead generation, how short a video would be successful? Less than 15 seconds? Well, it's tough to generalize too much, but lead generation messages are often shorter, yet you have a story to tell and emotion to build. So generally, we suggest that your lead generation be long enough to engage the viewer and build trust and anticipation, and then of course to move them to call to action but not anything longer than that. So it's not so much about length, but about the tightness of your story and edits. We suggest that you go back to our October 17th blog titled, How Long Should a Video Be? to get the full story. Number 10, do you concern yourselves that using Vimeo or YouTube channels for archived embedded videos could result in Vimeo or YouTube arbitrarily removing the videos? Well, YouTube and Vimeo do have the right to remove your videos for copyright infringement or inappropriateness according to their standards, but that occurrence is rare. And as long as your videos are complying with their terms of service, you should have nothing to worry about. But let's face it, the value of having your video there far exceeds the risk that it will be deleted. Number 11, what is the best way to include a call to action in a YouTube video? Well, there are multiple calls to action that you can include on YouTube. It's not just a buy now button. You can also ask for comments and YouTube gives you the ability to create annotations, that is buttons or messages that appear on your screen at times you control. We'll get into this subject in a future blog post. So finally, several of our viewers ask questions related to pointers for cameras, lighting, microphones, editing software, and related production questions. That's a whole series of blog posts that we'll dive into in the future, but for now, it will be most efficient if you simply email us directly and we'll get you a list of those resources sent to you. So by all means, post your questions and comments below on this blog or our YouTube channel. That will help guide us to know what's of greatest interest to you in our future posts. Watch in the weeks ahead as we dive deeper into some of these topics as we interpret opportunities for direct marketers from the YouTube Creator Playbook. We promise you're going to learn a lot. Well, that's all for today. On behalf of my co-author, Perry Alexander, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in our next installment of Online Video Marketing Deep Dive.